guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video or refilming it because I filmed it once and apparently in my infinite wisdom I deleted the footage and I can't find it anywhere even though I have vague recollections of actually filming this video so that's disappointing but unfortunately it does happen every once in a while when I have so many videos filmed in one weekend sometimes I just sit and like batch film a bunch of videos so say la vie we're gonna do it again this is round two and I'm excited because I thought this would be a fun video for you guys because I often get teased as like I buy everything I buy all the eyeshadow palettes so I thought it would be fun to film a video called eyeshadow palettes that I am not tempted by and this is actually the Sephora edition because I did go through the eyeshadow palettes that are available on Sephora and kind of write down some of the newer releases that I have not been tempted to buy which I think was really fun because I definitely do tend to buy a lot of eyeshadow palettes and I thought it would be fun for me to go through this list and tell you some of the palettes that have recently launched and I have had no desire to buy them. So the first palette is the Viseart Liaison palette which retails for $49. Now this is Viseart's version of a purple eyeshadow palette and I must say I'm not very impressed for $49. I've never been interested in Viseart's shimmer formula. I do love their mattes and I have a few of their 12 pan palettes, but as far as the purple palette goes, I think ColourPop did a wonderful job with their It's My Pleasure palette and that one's only $12 and I really, really enjoy it. And I love ColourPop's matte and shimmer formula, so I'm more than happy to just buy that and skip on this one. These shades are just not very inspiring as far as purples go to me. I know a lot of people love the palette, um, but I'm just so happy that I was not attracted to it. The next palette I had no reason to buy and I was not tempted by it at all is the Makeup Forever Let's Gold eyeshadow palette for $45. Now Makeup Forever has been around for a long long time. It's one of those like OG brands and it's definitely geared to professional makeup artists but this palette even when I saw it in store, I was so uninspired by it. It's a lot of repeat browns. And it's not that I don't like a good neutral palette. Don't get me wrong. I got the Natasha Denona Biba palette sitting right here. Like, I have no problem with a nice snooze fest neutral palette. But I like this one. This one... I like the formula, the Makeup Forever eyeshadow formula. I haven't really heard a whole lot about. I did try it back in the day and I wasn't very good at using it. I didn't think it had any pigment to it. So I don't love their formula. And because of that, I'm just not attracted to this Let's Gold eyeshadow palette. The other palette I wanna talk about, it's a little bit of a controversial palette. It's the Kat Von D Vegan Love palette for $43. Now, I feel like this palette is a distant cousin of the Mi Vida Loca palette. Like if you think of how beautiful the packaging is of the Mi Vida Loca palette and just like the thought that went in, into it, the artwork is very unique, the size, the colors that were offered in that palette, I feel like were more of an embodiment of who Kat Von D was at that time. I think just a very rebellious new brand on the block. But like this Vegan Love palette, it looks like a like a new person to makeup just designed it and they were like here make a palette and they're like okay let me just pick all the primary colors and make the eyeshadow pans so huge so people think they're getting a good deal for $43 and honestly this palette looks like a heated mess like I kind of feel sorry for the brand um, like they're already going down the drain and I feel like this palette is like the final nail on the coffin like if Kat Von D fans were not turned off enough as it is by the brand and the brand owner, this palette is going to get them there. So I feel like this palette is very unfortunate and definitely does not tempt me one bit. The next palette I want to talk about is the Ciate London Jessica Rabbit palette for $39, I believe. Now, I didn't grow up with the Jessica Rabbit character. I know a lot of people really love that character, and so people like that are going to be geared towards picking up this palette. I've also never really heard anyone say anything bad about Ciate's formula. It's just specifically this palette with this character and the color scheme doesn't really um, appeal to me. There have been different Ciate palettes in the past that have definitely spoken to me a whole lot more than this particular one does. So I'm just waiting for something that 
just grabs my attention from Ciate and then I'll pick it up but this palette was easy for me to pass on to be very honest. The next palette is the Sephora Pro Editorial 2.0 palette for $68. Now I actually bought two of the original Sephora Pro palettes and I realized I don't like the formula. It's more of that thin matte formula whereas I like a creamy matte formula that can take a good blending because I like to sit and blend my eyeshadows for like a half an hour. So I didn't love those. They were more of like a press into your skin type of formula. So I ended up actually taking those back because they were so expensive and then when I saw they were coming out with more I was really excited for the people that love this formula because there's nothing more fun than getting more variety from a formula you already know you like. But yeah, this one, the color scheme was a little lackluster. The new Sephora Pro palettes, all of them together I feel like were very boring um, so it was very easy for me to pass on those. The next palette I want to talk about is the NARS Ignite palette for $59. This palette I feel like is one of those where it's got gorgeous packaging, the shades look really beautiful but honestly I haven't really heard anyone say much about this palette. I think it was maybe hyped up when it first came out but I haven't seen anyone go like oh my god like you need to buy this palette like it's so amazing. The you know, the colors are so amazing. And a lot of what I found with buying NARS eyeshadow palettes is I don't love their formula. I used to love, love, love NARS so much, but I feel like the NARS formula reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay formula. And it's a very dry formula. Like the shimmers are very dry, whereas I prefer a very buttery, emollient shimmer formula, almost where it's oily. And I feel like with the NARS and Urban Decay type formulas, you like put them on and you're like, half the shimmer is like falling out of the eyeshadow because it's not like binding the shimmer to it. And yeah, I've just never had huge luck with NARS eyeshadows. It's been a long time since I've seen a palette from them that has like pulled me in. So yeah, it's pretty easy for me to skip out on that one as well. Now I wanted to talk about the Natasha Denona Mini Nude eyeshadow palette. This one is $25 and she's come out with the mini Leela. Did she do a mini sunset? And then she did a mini star palette. And I actually saw them in person. If you haven't seen them in person, they're probably the size of this box, maybe even a little bit skinnier. So they're really, really tiny. It's a great way for you to you know, try Natasha Denora's formula, but from the people that have reviewed it and that I've seen talk about it, it seems like it's not the greatest representation of the brand. I've heard a lot of people kind of complain about the quality of those, and I feel like you're not going to get the full impact of a good Natasha Denona palette by trying the minis. So for me, it was very easy to skip out. I also have the Natasha Denona Gold palette, and I just bought the Biba palette, and so I'm so content with my Natasha Denona collection. I think the Gold palette is honestly one of the best eyeshadow palettes of all time. I just love the colors. I love the textures. The formula is amazing. Like, one of the best Natasha Denona palettes. So for me, like, any palette... I buy from her is just really gonna have to blow me away. Obviously the Bima palette's not like knocking my socks off but I bought it for a different reason and I think it has a great spot in my collection because it's neutral and again it still has a stellar formula so I not tempted by the mini palettes by Natasha Denona. Uh, the Kevin Aquan Emphasize Eyeshadow Design Palettes, $46. These they had four shades of, and Kevin Aquan is one of those brands, you know, he's a well-known makeup artist. Everyone knows his book, Making Faces, and he's got some really like quality products. I think when you think of Kevin Aquan, you think of like bougie, and I really enjoy the Neo blush. I only have one in the shade Sunset, and it's so good. If that product is a testament to Kevin Aquan's line, I think like they've done a good job. But these eyeshadow palettes are so not my vibe. They're really cool tone. They just look very... Um, I don't want to say like mature in a bad way, but they just look mature and they look like it would be for somebody that's into doing like the same eye look every day, you know, has one palette and that's the only palette they use. I could totally see that vibe. I know Kevin Aquan has made more fun palettes. Like there, was it there, there was like a Neo Pop palette that they came out with. I still know people that rave about that palette on YouTube. I kind of wish I had bought it. I don't think you can buy it anymore, but... I've heard good things about that one and then the one they came out with in the holidays that was like the purple gold palette. I've heard a lot of people say good things about that. So when I think of those palettes and then I see these palettes, I'm like, 
what the heck like these <laughs> these look so boring kind of a snooze fest so definitely staying no to those next a palette i want to talk about is the mark jacobs stiletto palette and i actually have the mark jacobs what is it called um it's the one everyone has uh with the pinks and the oranges Shoot, I'm totally blanking and I can see my palette, it's right there, but that palette I have, Scandalous? Scan Scandalous, I think. Um, I bought it during one of the sales because everyone was like raving about Marc Jacobs palettes and I was like, fine, I'll buy one and I bought it and I don't think I've used it more than twice, maybe? <laughs> and I just, I don't love it. I love colorful shadows and then when it goes to more neutrals, I still like reaching for like my ColourPop neutral palettes over like something like Marc Jacobs. So when I saw the stiletto and everyone loves, like is really into cool tones, was so happy that they came out with something like that. And I'm glad they did that for people that love cool tones because everyone deserves to find an eyeshadow palette that they love. But as far as I go, it doesn't tempt me at all. Like I, you could like dangle that palette in front of my face. You could give it to me for free. I'd still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be tempted by it. I wouldn't be tempted to use it at all. So that's that. <laughs> Next palette is the Bobbi Brown Molten Drama Palette for $59. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, that's like a colorful palette. Like, I wonder who made that? And like, Bobbi Brown did not come to mind at all. Again, another famous, famous makeup artist. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't think I'm her target market. I feel like her brand is for people that do like the light makeup and honestly, I don't know. I don't know who buys Bobbi Brown makeup. I think I maybe tried like one foundation from her maybe a long time ago. I just know that she's one of those brands that like even me growing up in Sri Lanka, I had heard of Bobbi Brown, whereas there's so many brands that I use now that I know about now that I would have never heard of if I still still live back at home. But the fact that people knew who Bobbi Brown was obviously means that the brand is very much out there. Um, this palette looks very different from what they're usually doing. There's like a little bit of color in it, I would say. It's definitely not like the Jeffree Star Blue Blood palette, but it's it's more color than I've ever seen Bobbi Brown do. So for that reason, I think it's cool. I did read the reviews on that palette and they were not good, um, which is more reason not to buy it. So yep, definitely not tempted by that palette at all. And then the last palette I want to talk about is the Natasha Denona Safari palette. And this one's a little bit of an older palette, but... Um, I don't know. Something about it. I think it was that it reminded me so much of the Viseart Dark Mattes palette. I was like, wow, I feel like I already have all those shades. And I actually ended up selling my Dark Mattes palette because I wasn't reaching for it. It's the first ever Viseart palette I bought. And I liked some of the shades in it, like the orange shades, but I never got used out of the greens, the blues in there, and they were just not my makeup vibes. And so I was like, you know what, Karen? It's time to make difficult decisions. It's time to get rid of your Viseart palette because you don't use it, and you might as well sell it to somebody that wanted to try the brand or is attracted to those colors or for whatever reason they're looking for this palette. So I was happy to declutter it, but yeah. I just, the Safari palette, it was just kind of like, calling to me but not really and then I think I saw Mel Thompson review it and she did not have a good time with that palette so yeah that definitely helped me also be less tempted by it but yeah that is the last palette I wanted to talk about and that is everything for my palettes that don't tempt me video I hope you guys enjoyed this one let me know down in the comments what palette you're not tempted by Maybe it's a palette that everyone raves about and you don't get the hype. I would love to hear from you guys down below. So definitely leave me a comment and I will see you guys in my next video soon.